Hey guys, what's up? In this video, I'll be explaining how an HTTP server works. I'll be going through the outline working of an HTTP server. If you already know how an HTTP server works internally, feel free to skip this video and just go to the next video in which we'll be creating an HTTP server using Visual C Sharp. So let's get started. First of all, we have a client machine, which is actually the user, and it will be running a client process, uh, which can be a browser or any other process that can make an HTTP request. Then you have a server. Imagine the server has a public IP address 100.120.22.1. Then it will be running a process that is actually the server process, which will be listening to a port, for example, the port 80. In case of HTTP, it is by default port 80, or it can be any other port that you have explicitly mentioned in the server settings. Imagine you are making a request to example.com, then a colon, then the port, then the path to a, a specific resource. It can be a HTML page or any other file as well. Okay, the port part is optional. Actually, for HTTP, by default, the port is 80 and it is already known. And if it is running on some other port, you can explicitly mention the port by putting a colon there. Then you have the path. What the browser does is it approaches a DNS server, then it resolves the IP address for the server. For the given domain name, it will be getting the IP address. That is 100.120.22.1 in our case. Okay. Once the IP address is obtained, the browser will be establishing a TCP socket between the server and the client. Once the socket connection is established, two-way communication is possible between the server and the client. Now the client or the browser will make a request to the server process. Request is actually nothing. It is a set of strings which will be converted to a stream of bytes and will be sent over the TCP socket to the process at the server side. How does the process at the server side knows the request has come to an end? Because as I said, it's a stream of bytes. Always the request ends with a slash r slash n that indicates the end of the request. Whenever the process running at the server encounters a slash r slash n, it understands that the request has reached its end. Now let's take a look at the request. First of all, that is the method, which is the get method we are using. It can be put, post, patch, delete, etc. Okay. And next part is the path we are mentioning to the resource, which we are seeking for or we are requesting for. For example, it can be an HTML file or it can be an image file. It is actually the path. Then you have the protocol and its version. Then you have the host name specified. Like in case of Apache, we have a concept called virtual host where you can host multiple websites on a single IP address on a single server. In that case, the Apache makes use of this host in the request for identifying which website actually the client requested for. And there are other parameters as well. For example, the accepted content types and other things. Once it reaches the end of the request, the server process the request and fetches the files or any other resource which is requested by the client and then it sends back a response. So the response is also nothing, it's a set of string which is converted into a stream of bytes and it is sent back to the client. The response consists of the headers as well as the body. As you can see here, the header and the body is separated by two new lines. That is one new line is here and another one is here. That is how the browser distinguishes between the header and the body. And the body part is rendered to the browser or it may be even getting downloaded if you have another header called the content disposition as attachment. You would have seen certain files get downloaded whereas the certain ones would be rendered into the browser's UI. That's how it is done. Actually, like content type, we have another header called the content disposition. If it is set to attachment, then it will download rather than rendering into the browser's UI. Response header consists of the protocol, then the protocol version, then the status code, which is 200 in our case. Then it, you have a message. The response code can be 404 if a page is not found, and it can be 301 for redirection, 200 for OK, etc. And then you have a server name, it can be anything. And then you have the content type that you are providing back. The response header will be used by the browser for getting more information on the content or the response body. The request can also have a body, like in case of a put or a post request, it can have a body as well. In our case, for the simplicity, we are only considering symbol get request. Okay, once the complete data is sent back to the client, 
the server closes the TCP socket so that there is no TCP socket connection between the client and the server anymore. Once the connection is closed by the server, the client or the browser will be rendering the content or it will be downloading the content to the user's machine or the client machine. And that's how an overall working of an HTTP server is. Now in the next part, we'll be implementing or creating a simple HTTP server using Visual C Sharp. So see you guys there. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you.